England preparing for their last 16 clash with Senegal. And we can speak now to our senior reporter, Tim Thornton, who's with someone who could tell us a little more about Sunday's opponents. Yeah, we're three days away from England's round of 16 game against Senegal. So what do we know about England's opponents? Well, we're joined by Gary Alsmith, who's an African football specialist. So a lot of people are expecting England to progress through to the quarterfinals. Is this going to be a more difficult game than a lot of England fans are anticipating? I think so, but less difficult than if Sadio Mane were around, I would wager. Um, again, in my pre-World Cup predictions, that was before Sadio Mane got injured, I did have Senegal being second in their group and meeting England in my predictions. Of course, I had Senegal beating England to progress to the quarterfinal. <laughs> um, and there were a few reasons why that heavily had to do with Sadio. Now, with him not around, we've seen them rally and do something many of us thought they could do but didn't know they could actually do it, which was to bring out their inner united front and to show us why they are the team with the deepest squad in African football at the moment. Because even without Sadio, they've been able to bring out a couple of good options. Bulay Dia, we saw him. Um, we've seen Ismail Asa, who has been very effervescent and electric. Whether he can do it against England's equally organized team is another matter altogether. But they've got something, you know, they've got that vibe going around them. That, I suppose, should be able to do their job against England. What are the biggest strengths in this team? Are they strong defensively? Do they, do they attack well? Or is it just that togetherness and that, that spirit? I think togetherness and that spirit, for some people, sounds like ah, it's a bit of a cliche, but it, it is a thing. Even with this England team, you see it. There's something inside them that allows them to go that extra mile. And you saw it probably best with the way they responded when Kalilu Kulibali equalized with just minutes after they, um, they were pegged back by Ecuador. You know, but they have the talent too. They've got Kalilu, they've got um, Pathesis, they've got a solid spine, right down from the goalkeeper to the defense, to the midfield, and to the attack. Also, we must remember that any time they've got somebody out of the team, they have a bench that is solid enough to augment it. So they are not pretty weak anywhere, and they are pretty strong anywhere as well. Ali say the coach has said an African team can win this World Cup. Is he right? Well, no lies detected. There are five African teams here. Um, as at the time of recording this, theoretically, we could have four African teams going into the round of 16. Already, the African teams have shattered their best ever performance at the World Cup. With Senegal's win, they had 18 points on the board. That's better than the 15 they had in 1998. And it doesn't look like they are stopping now. Ghana is here to play, and Ghana can beat Uruguay. So Ali Ossise is not just being sentimental. I mean, on paper, and the way they are playing. I mean, Ghana are scoring goals for fun. They just need to tighten up at the back. So I don't think it's too um, far-fetched to say that Ali is saying the right thing by saying an African team can get that far, maybe into the semi-final. It's going to be tough, but yeah. And Ghana, Uruguay, is that going to be a special game? Super special. Uh, more so for the fans, I believe, because the team, as far as I know, are super chilled about it all. There's so much being drummed into their heads about an anti-revenge agenda. The coaches are working on them and telling them that, guys, if you enter that pitch with a revenge ad agenda, you're probably going to lose that game before the 20th minute. Because Uruguay, through Luis Suarez, I mean, he's already started playing in mind games. He says they've beaten Ghana before and they, are, they know how to beat Ghana again. That comment alone has riled up the fans to no end. And the team are working on the boys to make sure that it doesn't get into their heads. The great thing, I suppose, for the Ghana team is this. When Ghana played Uruguay in 2010, most of them in the starting 11 were not even 14 years old. We had a few of them. Andre Ayo was 21, he was part of the team. But you've got Lawrence Atizigi, the goalkeeper, who was 14. Some of them were two years, some of them were six years, some of them were eight years. So they don't really understand. You had Tariq Lamptey, who was 10. What did he know? You know. Um, 
basically, the pressure has to come from somewhere. They won't feel it themselves because they might not really remember, you know, what it felt like to have that atmosphere. So I think that psychologically, if the work is done on them, they can go out there, have their fun, and do what they have to do. They understand what it means, but they won't let it overawe them. And just quickly, yeah. Brazil against Cameroon. Can Cameroon beat them and create a huge shock? I don't think so. <laughs> that's that's the, about the only African team that I'm not too sure about. You know, things have happened in the Cameroonian camp. We know about Andre Onana and all that. But even the way they play doesn't fill me with confidence that Brazil is one of the favorites of the World Cup to win the World Cup. And it's not like they are Argentina kind of favorites because Argentina haven't really clicked. Brazil are truly, really lethal, you know. And I think Cameroon are going to take about three or four. <laughs> OK. But we'll see what happens with England sure. and Senegal. But the message from Gary is quite simple. Do not underestimate them.